Hi, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of Shark Tales. This week, we're coming to you from the Division of Marine Fisheries office in New Bedford, where we're going to be talking to Dr. Greg Skomal about shark tags. But first, let's catch up on sightings around Massachusetts. <gasps> no way. Oh my God. <gasps> On Friday, the research team was out along the coast of the Outer Cape. It was a really busy day. Dr. Greg Skomala tagged four sharks in the stretch from Nauset Beach down south to Monomoy. It was so busy, we didn't make it any further north, but other people who were out uh, saw sharks all the way up to Provincetown. So again, it was a busy week for shark sightings. It's important to remember that a sighting doesn't necessarily equal a single shark. Sometimes the same shark is spotted multiple times and reported multiple times. There's a lot of different tag technologies out there, each one of which is better suited for answering a different question. Um, and to talk more about that, I'm going to pass things over to Dr. Greg Skomal of the Division of Marine Fisheries, who's the lead on white shark research in state waters. The one we most commonly use is the acoustic tag. This is basically a transmitter. What it does is every 60 seconds emits a very high frequency sound that is not heard by the shark or by us, but it is picked up by an array of acoustic receivers that we have set up all around Cape Cod and Massachusetts in general. This is what an acoustic receiver looks like. So anytime the shark, which has the transmitter, swims within a couple of hundred yards of this receiver, the receiver will hear the tag, determine which shark it is, and do a timestamp, date and time of day. What about when sharks move far away from us? Where do they go? How do we answer those questions? For those, we use a couple of different kinds of satellite-based tags. This is the more common of the two that we use. This is called a pop-up satellite tag. What this tag does is we put it on a white shark. It records temperature and depth information every 10 seconds and just logs it. So it's a data logger. What it does also is at a time programmed by us, it will detach from the shark, float to the surface, and transmit data to a satellite. Every now and then, we'll use one of these tags. This is called a spot tag, and the way this tag works is anytime the shark is at the surface, it transmits to a satellite and tells us where it is at that moment. Sounds great, except that we have to capture the shark, we have to handle the shark, we have to bolt this to the dorsal fin, so in essence, we're stressing the shark out to some extent. And if the shark doesn't come to the surface, we don't hear from it again. So a lot of people think a shark looks like a shark looks like a shark, but there's actually a lot of really unique characteristics that we can use to tell them apart. One big thing we use is different pigmentation patterns, so patterns of coloration, uh, white spots on the tail. We use things like scarring patterns. A lot of these sharks um, have had big injuries before. We have a few sharks that have been hit by boats. Other sharks um, have bite wounds. We actually go frame by frame to make sure we don't miss anything. Um, because if you think about the way we're collecting that underwater video, we've got a shark that's moving and a boat that's moving and a camera that's, that's going through the water. So a lot of times we'll get full coverage of the body of the sharks, but in a couple of different takes. Or sometimes we just get a piece of a shark and we have to use the piece of the shark that we did get to match it up with individuals that we've previously ID'd. And at this point, We've identified just over 300 sharks to date, but again, it's a, it's a pretty slow, slow process. <laughs> Thanks everybody for tuning into this week's episode of Shark Tales. Make sure to follow NBC10 Boston's YouTube, Instagram, and Shark Tales podcast to get shark updates every week. <laughs>